something I used to do all the time when I was younger was explore abandoned places. Whether it was abandoned houses, psychiatric wards, or just unfinished construction sites, we saw it all. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true urban exploration horror stories. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's an urbex story or something different, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Now, without further ado, let's go explore these abandoned places and see what scares lie just beyond that corner. I haven't told these stories to anyone in several years. Every time I do, I get chills all over, and my eyes would start watering, even though I wasn't crying. This took place at an abandoned insane asylum in the city where I grew up in South Alabama. It has since been torn down. Both stories come from very close friends of mine. They do not know each other in any way. The first took place around eight years ago. Two friends of mine, we'll call them Mike and Jake, decided to climb the fence around this asylum, as many others have done before. They walked into the front door shortly after 11pm. As soon as they step in, they both feel like something is telling them to leave, but they decide to split up and explore different floors. This probably was not a very good idea. Mike decides to take the second floor and Jake starts to walk around the ground floor. As Mike ascends the stairs, he hears a noise that sounds like a child whimpering. He comes back to the landing between the first and second floors and sees a little girl in the fetal position in the corner. He walks toward her, thinking maybe he can help, but when she looks up at him, she disappears. He runs back down and grabs Jake by the arm. He says, man, we have to get out of here now, and explains why. They leave and never go back. The second story comes from a girl that we'll call Sherry. She goes in with two males and another female. They split up and start exploring each floor. I believe they were at least three floors in. Sherry is on the second floor with one of the males and they walk into a room with a gurney on a side. There was a patient file spread out all over the floor, some even dating back to the early 1990s. They look through a few and put them back. Then, suddenly, the gurney starts moving across the room somewhat slowly, all by itself. They look at each other, wondering what the hell is going on. One of the guys with them says to her, It was probably just a draft in the room. Let's see if the gurney moves easily and we'll know. Sherry steps forward and tries to push the gurney back. The wheels are rusted and locked. They won't move at all. They decide to get out of that room and explore other areas. They walk down the hall and Sherry decides to go into another room alone. At this point, the other two people are nowhere nearby and the male is in another room. As soon as she steps across the threshold, she feels her mindset change abruptly. She described it to me that it felt like she was someone else, that she felt defeated and that she knew she was just a lowly woman, not worth anything or worth living. She picks up one of the pages of the patient files that are thrown around the building and starts to read it. A woman who was physically and emotionally abused by her husband was kept in this room around the same time the facility closed. She drops the page on the floor and screams for her friend. He runs into the room wrapping his arms around her waist and pulling her back across the threshold. As soon as she is out of that room, she feels relief and feels like herself again. She explains what happened and the guy is so scared that they both decide that it's not worth it anymore and they find their friends and leave as quickly as possible. They never went back in, and the building was demolished just a few years later. This story is from 2014, and it was the last time I ever went urban exploring. I am from Northeast Ohio around the Youngstown area. When I was in high school, me and my friends often would look for places to go especially haunted places in Ohio. It took us all over the state, from Helltown to Athens. 
even dabbled into famous haunted places right over the state line in Zombieland, Pennsylvania. However, this isn't about any of those. One day, I was bored and know that I normally go ghost hunting and urban exploring with groups of friends and stuff. Today, I called a random buddy and asked him if he wanted to go with me. Not only did he want to, but he said he knew of a place. The place was an old abandoned rail yard. I have heard of this place before, but didn't go because the owner of the property will call the cops on you. But since he offered to drive, I couldn't resist finding a new place. Getting there, we parked at a well-known restaurant and catering company across the street. We just had to walk through a wood line in a small tunnel. It opened up to a huge area with a big garage to our left with the actual train tower to our right walking around the place that was a lot of rubble and what looked like satanic graffiti. I'm not sure if it was real or not. I was always told there was a cult that inhabited there, but it was just a legend. At least I thought so. But exploring around, there was a lot of neat sights. The old elevator shaft said gateway to hell. Walking up to the top floor of the tower about six floors up, my buddy did what every guy wants to do, pee off the highest spot. Well, I said go for it and walked away, letting him do his business and back to me exploring around. I hear a loud bang and my buddy running over to me. His eyes were wide open, and he had this look of horror on his face. I looked at him and said, everything okay, man? He replied back with, no, there, there's a guy. Okay, we are exploring and trespassing. So this is either just another one of us or there's a big problem because that's the owner and we're going to get in trouble, I whispered. He looked me in the eyes and said, no man, I, I think he's dead. My stomach sank and I was like, show me. Walking over, he explained that while he was going to take a leak, he found a backpack with spray paint in it and on the window, the ledge said, jump. I did. In disbelief, I walked over to the window and it clearly said that, and with a count of three, I peeked my head over the ledge. And to my horror, there was a kid no older than me mangled with a bloody face against the building. I froze, and looked back at my friend. We instantly started running for the stairs. On each floor, I remember checking to see the status of this kid. Out in the open rail yard, now I look back to see a clearly dead person. How did I miss that walking into this place? This was the way we walked in, and somehow we did not notice. We both agreed to call the police and report this. When they arrived, we were taken into question and brought to the station to make our statement. They informed us that he was a few days dead, but had no missing reports in the area. About a year later after a Halloween party, I brought this story up to someone that was like, that was one of my friend's boyfriends. Well, was. Apparently he was acting weird, and there was talk of him being in a cult, but not for sure. My friend, since this account has suffered mental problems and I have since become a firefighter and EMT, so that was just another incident for me at this point. But it has always stuck with me as the last time I have ever went urban exploring or ghost hunting. Back in college, my friends and I got into the habit of exploring abandoned buildings. We've seen some incredible places and have gotten some really cool souvenirs. I don't really condone taking stuff from buildings, but if it is about to be torn down and contractors have taken out everything they deem to be worth something, then I'll gladly take that depression glass they left behind. I digress. It's a small group of friends that goes exploring with me, and I love introducing new people to it. A friend of mine had asked me on several occasions if I could take him somewhere because he never went exploring before. I decided to take him to an old paper factory that didn't have much inside, but had an absolutely beautiful view of the city from the roof. Also, it was incredibly easy to get in and out of, so it was great for a beginner. We went with a few other people, but two of my friends had decided to wait outside for us since they had been in and out of the building so many times that it wasn't interesting to them anymore. It was always good to have a lookout anyway. As we went to climb inside, a drunk couple came out. Not unusual, a lot of people used the building to smoke, drink, or paint in. And we asked if there were many people inside. They said they thought it was mostly empty, but they heard someone banging around a few floors up that startled them. They said that he sounded angry and maybe we should avoid the roof. 
Since we weren't there to drink or anything, the roof was our only goal. We decided we'll take our chances and head up. After all, it's a massive building and we didn't think we would run into the guy. We walked up ten flights of stairs and the climb to the ladder to the roof was pretty brutal. My friend is impressed and the view is absolutely beautiful. As we are about to head back down, my friend waiting on the street calls to us. He says that a man has passed out in the street and two of them pulled him out of the way of traffic and called an ambulance for him. They suggest we waited out on the roof to avoid exiting the building while the cops are there. Neither of us can afford the $5,000 fine or two-week jail time just for looking at the city from an abandoned building. We wait, but we probably shouldn't have waited on the roof. We get the all clear from my friend to come back down, and we head down the ladder. My friend goes first and then our flashlight dies. The ladder is tricky to get down, and when you can't see it, it's pretty hard. It's missing some rungs. So I came down very slowly in the dark, afraid of hurting myself or anyone else. I hop down and my friend tells me very quietly that he hears someone in the room next to us. And I shrug it off. We already knew people were in the building. Then, the screaming starts. At first, it almost sounds like one of my friends who waited inside yelling my name. I hesitated at the top of the stairs just outside the door of the room the screaming was emanating from, trying to decide if it was him or if he's playing some sort of prank. The guy I came into the building with grabs my wrist and starts running down the stairs. At this point, it's obvious it's not my friend, and it's just this guttural, intense screaming. It didn't seem to have any rhyme or reason. We start running down the stairs and then hear really loud banging to go with the screaming. It sounds like this guy has a very heavy object that he is swinging around the walls and hitting the exposed pipes. There is only one flight of stairs because every other way down is out of order. So, we are trapped in this stairwell, and it's ten flights till we reach the ground floor and have to book it to the opposite side of this factory and back out the hole we climbed through. Besides screaming and swinging of that heavy object, we hear him barreling down the stairs behind us, but he is at least a floor behind. Whatever he is using to hit the walls and pipes with is clearly enough to do some damage to our skulls because a bit of brick chipped off the walls when he hit it with whatever he had in his hand. We've only made it down three floors at the beginning of each flight of stairs there is a new door that opens onto the entire level. In other words, it is painfully obvious where we've gone. After flying into this room, we've noticed it's just been gutted like every other floor, but more of the windows are boarded up and it's incredibly dark. All that's in this room to hide in behind are some pillars. We get behind one of them and huddle together. This guy stops outside the doorway to the room we are in, and he is still screaming. It's terrifying. Then he starts swinging his weapon around and slamming it into the door frame. We're sure he's going to come in, and the only way is this one door. Neither of us look around the pillar to see if the guy is there, and we have no idea what his weapon is. Nearly four minutes pass and he hasn't stopped screaming. For whatever reason, he doesn't come into the room we are in, but starts running down the stairs. We can hear him hitting pipes and smacking the walls, and we just wait there. We have seven floors to go down still, and we could pass him in any doorway on that way down. Eventually, the screaming and banging stops, but we still think we should wait. That's when we hear something from a different corner of our room. There's just enough light from a window in there to see that there's a figure getting up off the floor. The person has been in the room with us the entire seven or eight minutes we've been in there, and they haven't let on until now. This person, who is in front of the only light source, is a totally black figure. It's now shuffling towards us without making a sound. It is exactly like a zombie movie and we run. We don't bother to find out what this person's deal is and temporarily forget all about the first clearly dangerous guy. For an asthmatic, I hauled my ass down those stairs and never paused to catch my breath even once. As we are reaching the bottom of the stairwell, the screaming starts again and is coming from the room next to us. We don't stop running the whole time. We literally slide through the hole in the wall we climbed through without even a, a second thought. We never look back and I don't think I've ever climbed through a hole so fast. I don't even remember doing it. Our two other friends were waiting for us and we throw ourselves into the car. They asked what happened because apparently the man was so loud they could hear him screaming and breaking things from outside the building. They thought we were the ones making out the noise and they were going to give it a few minutes before calling us to remind us that the police were still patrolling the area for drunk underage college students, and we should probably be quiet. We tell them what happened, and then decide to carry on with our plans for the night, because beer 
was a totally necessary thing after that. Yesterday I was doing something I love to do. Explore. It sounds stupid, but to me exploring abandoned areas or off-limit grounds is intriguing. Look up some videos on YouTube about urban exploration if you want to learn more about the hobby. For now, it's story time. I was raised in the city of Atlanta, which is pretty awesome. There are lots of places to explore and we find new places every single day. Much of what we find is outside of the metro area. We use Google Earth looking for abandoned shacks, buildings, and stuff like that. Then we go explore. So yesterday we found a little home that looked completely torn down and wanted to check it out. So we walk through some woods during the middle of the day and arrive. As usual, we knock and yell announcing that we are here and aren't robbers or cops. We have stumbled upon people robbing copper from abandoned houses multiple times, and it is better to let them know who you are than to run into them unannounced. Nobody answered, so in we went. We weren't scared per se. We have done this type of thing a ton of times, and barely have ever come across anything unusual. So we started searching. We noticed the floor feels hollow. When walking on the floor, it didn't feel hollow though. But when you jumped up and down, you could notice the noise sounded like it was empty. We peeled back a smelly rug and found a little hatch. No way. No way in hell this is happening. My brain is freaking out. Part of me has seen enough horror movies to know not to go in. The other half knew this is what any urban explorer would dream of. So I opened it. There's a small staircase. It was folded up, kind of like the old fold-up ladders people use to get into their attics. Three of us climbed down in. First, there's an old rotten bag of lays. There were bugs inside and no chips. Using rubber gloves, I picked them up. Expiration. January 27th. 2014. Somebody was here. It had obviously been a while, though. There are a lot of people who do what we do in Atlanta. Finding new, unexplored places is rare. We kept walking around and searching, but we didn't find much except for a ratty old computer monitor. Then we heard strange-sounding footsteps coming from upstairs. We had no idea what to do. There was frantic kicking on the floors above us, as if somebody was being restrained. We scrambled for the window. The room was a basement, but the top of the basement was above ground and had these little mini windows, letting in just a little bit of light. I tried to open the first one, but it was jammed. There was dirt outside blocking it. My friend managed to get the second one opened. We all ditched our bags and crawled through. We ran like hell, got in the pickup truck we came in, and drove. And that's the story. I wish I could say more happened and share more detail, but we weren't there for very long and there's no way in hell I'm going back there just for no reason. One thing we are considering is setting up a GoPro on the window we escaped from and setting it on the time lapse and see what we can catch. It started several years ago. Me and my friend's interest in urban exploration. I was a junior in high school at the time which was when everyone started to earn a lot more freedom. So we took the chance to be out late whenever we could. Now keep in mind that I live in a major city in central Colorado, so the nightlife is never really lacking. We could always find something to do and were especially drawn if there was an element of danger. We wouldn't always plan these trips, but we made sure as hell that if we were going into any old building in the dark, we would have a knife and a flashlight for safety. We never really had to defend ourselves, we came very close one evening. It must have been around November, because there wasn't much snow on the ground yet, but it was chilly. Directly across the street from the abandoned hospital, which we have hypothesized is still around from the TB era. It's a hospital that is not in use anymore, but it is connected to a hospital that is newer and is in use. The two are connected by an underground tunnel, which I can only assume was a way to move bodies without alerting the patients. This is a common feature among old hospitals. We had been inside the hospital a couple of times, but never found anything outright strange. Only the occasional sign of others having been there or lived there at some point. 
What was piquing our interest that night was the abandoned library next door to that hospital. It was connected but only by exterior walls. To get inside, you could not cut through the hospital, but instead had to hop over a tall wall and climb a very high fence. A few of us had backpacks containing the safety precautions we all needed and a couple bottles of water, so nothing too heavy or valuable that would get damaged when tossed over obstacles before us. A little way off the road, it was dark if you clung to the buildings. We did for a while before stepping behind a small patch of shrubbery, which we determined was an easy way over the first wall, since the only other way to gain access was by a chained, unclimbable gate at the bottom of a set of stairs, facing away from the ledge. Both were parallel to the library, so when tucked back into that corner behind the bushes, no one could see us from the street. I do not believe I went first, but I did not remain behind to be last over that wall. It was too high up for me to jump over and haul myself over, so I resorted to stepping on a pipe jutting out somewhere lower along the wall. It gave me a bit of a needed boost, and soon I was up and over, moving into the library's courtyard. Another girl and I waited for our other two girlfriends to join us. Upon an initial glance over the courtyard, there was no obvious way in. To our right was a dilapidated fountain, which I took joy in imagining how it would look in spring with water spraying from it. It was beautiful, detailed stonework. Now, however, it had been in such long disuse, and the earth at our feet was cold and hard, there were no signs of another soul for years, save the fifteen-foot chain-link fence directly in front of us, separating the courtyard in half. I could tell I hadn't seen the same weather as the rest of the courtyard, because the metal showed no signs of rust. That must be our way in, we agreed because a fence like that, someone obviously wanted to keep somebody out. We hurled our bags over the fence, hearing them clank on the ground rather silently due to their lightness. I was the third over, because I have a slight fear of climbing, and it took me a bit to mentally prepare myself. I made it to the top of the fence in short time, then sat at the top straddling it with my legs on each side. I had two girls on the other side of me, and one girl behind me who was telling me to hurry up. I spent a good couple of minutes up there doing another mental preparation and doing some deep breathing, then climbed down and waited for the last girl. At the time, I was thinking that this had to be one of the scariest things I've done in a while, because I tend to avoid climbing at all cost. Of course, this is an irrational fear, as I've never fallen, but the phobic fear didn't even compare to what would happen to us next. The last girl's feet hit the ground and all four of us split in the smaller half of the courtyard looking for any kind of entrance. We decided that breaking a window would be too loud and draw unwanted attention, not to mention we could get really cut up, so that wasn't an option for us. Searching for a little longer, we didn't find anything that looked remotely plausible, until we found a grate near the base of where the two walls met. I could not believe we hadn't noticed it before, and upon closer inspection, the grate was already moved slightly from its resting place, so it would be easy to lift it the rest of the way. The smallest and least fearful of our group went first. After moving the grate, there was a small drop down. It was no more than three feet down and two feet wide, but inside there was another drop down to where we could see the library basement. She hopped down into the small square landing, only to almost immediately freeze. We looked amongst ourselves wondering what was wrong. There's a guy down here, she said. What? Where? I can see his outline she said. I leaned forward and tried to make out a shape, but it was further down than my light of sight permitted and too dark. Hello? She called out. He responded the same, asking who we were. Just a couple of chicks, she spat out bluntly. What he said next sent chills down my spine, and it was as if he could feel the darkness radiating out of the hole in the ground. Suddenly, it was very still and quiet, like the darkness had spilled out and weighed all of us down in that gloomy courtyard. He said, in what I can only describe as a lustful tone dripping with ill intent, I'm addicted to following the sound of women's voices. My friend looked over at us blankly, but there was nervousness underneath. Unease. Something in his voice sounded like it wasn't an empty threat, like he wasn't just saying something creepy to get us to leave. She looked back to where he was and said slowly, That's not cool. The man under the dark earth began laughing maniacally, and not in a kind of way a good, a good actor does, no. 
in the type of way that you could feel his utter insanity hit us like a stale air. We looked at each other for what felt like hours in that gloomy courtyard, but I knew it was only a couple of seconds, because we all exchanged looks without even speaking that we need to get out of there right now. I was not about to risk some nutcase coming after us, even if we did outnumber him. The friend scrambled up and out of the landing, and I was never over a fence faster in my life. Fifteen foot potential fall and I didn't even have time to think about it. We didn't stop running until we were on the street about halfway down the block out of breath. I could still hear that laugh sometimes. I've always wanted to share some of my stories with the show, and I'm finally making the jump to do so. This one is one of the most recent. In my hometown, there's an abandoned asylum across from my college. This is a place I go to often, usually to sit on the steps and not really do much else. After telling one of my close friends about this place, she wanted to see it for herself. The two of us trekked an hour from my house in the rain to get there. This meant it was dark by the time we got there. We looked around the area. There were a few other people, but we ignored them due to my friend feeling a bit uncomfortable. After roughly about an hour, we looked around the area. There were a few other people, but we ignored them due to my friend being a bit uncomfortable. We started to head home as we passed by the main building. One of the other people our age whispered at us to get our attention. He and two others had found an opening to the building through the boarded window. The three of them seemed nice, and they said going as a group would be better. I wasn't so sure because I had a bad feeling, but my friend went ahead. We had to hold open a very big log to keep the board open, this log taking three of us to lift due to its weight. This comes into play later. I was reluctant, but my friend had already hopped through the window and was with complete strangers at this point. I couldn't leave her and coming here was my idea, so I climbed in. Regular exploring took place, using our phones for flashlights while navigating the musky place which has been left decrepit since the 1980s. The others wanted to go upstairs, which I was already anxious and didn't think it was a good idea due to the fact that the building was so old and hadn't been touched in so long. After some convincing, I walked over to the stairs while the others were in the hall near our makeshift entrance. Behind me suddenly came very fast and heavy footsteps, as if someone was barreling down toward me. At the same time, the board closed. I remember one of the girls screaming, No, wait! We all scrambled to get out, the others leaving me behind. I pulled myself out, getting a cut from the broken glass. We noticed the log was gone, nowhere to be seen. I had a feeling of darkness after I left and didn't stop shaking for about six hours. I don't know if this was paranormal, if this was linked to some sort of negative energy in that place. I mean, it was an asylum. It wasn't a happy place at all. It could have been deaths and many other residual hauntings in that area. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true urban exploration horror stories. If you enjoyed these stories, please hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm, and that's incredibly helpful to the swamp. If you're new, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode, as I upload them nearly every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a scary story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's an urban exploration story or something different, please be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you enjoyed these stories and are listening on Apple Podcast or another podcast platform, please be sure to give this a 5-star rating over there as that helps me out a ton. If you're on the go and don't have YouTube Premium, but still want to listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about anywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. If you would like to support the Swamp outside of hitting that like button, subscribing, or giving us a 5-star rating on Apple Podcasts, maybe check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. I'd love to know in the comments down below what story was your favorite tonight. I always have a hard time picking one, because most of these are always so good. 
be sure to join me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I'll see you all soon for another creepy episode.